Evangelical and conservative Christians seem to make a really big deal out of the idea that God is creator. Why is that? Why is the doctrine of creation so important for many Christians? I'm joined today by Dr. Ken Keithley, a Christian scholar and a professor of theology at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary in Wake Forest to help answer that question. Uh, Ken, why is the doctrine of creation so important to Christians? Yeah, well, that's a, it's a great question. And the answer is, is that it is of fundamental importance. Uh, it's of fundamental importance because the Bible literally starts with the doctrine of creation. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so if one starts properly with the doctrine of creation, uh, you know, it's like any type of navigational uh, attempt starting off correctly, uh, you, you have a good chance of ending up correctly. If you start skewed, one can find later on that you're really off course. And so st having a proper understanding of the doctrine of creation then allows us to have a proper understanding of a number of things, not the least of which is God himself. How one understands the doctrine of creation and God's relationship to creation you know, did, you know is, did God create out of nothing? Did he create out of, out of pre-existing materials? Did he create out of himself? Uh, all of those kind of questions. Getting that established is, is important. Second, uh, creation lets us know what is the storyline of redemption. You know, you have the, the four great points of the biblical story. Creation, fall, redemption, consummation. And it's an essential that you get the story right about that uh, in order to understand what is, what is salvation all about. And so uh, in order to understand God correctly, uh, in order to understand the biblical story correctly, to understand how we fit in the story, um, it lets us know, uh, are, we, are we made out of God's stuff? Are we divine? The answer is no. Well, are we worthless and meaningless? No, we find that we are intriguingly somewhere between. We are created out of stuff, but the stuff has been fashioned in such a way that we reflect the divine image. We have the divine imprint. And so we are created beings who are created in the divine image. It lets us know that we are not to think too highly of ourselves uh, and uh, commit idolatry. We're not to think so lowly of ourselves that we have despair. No, mm. there's, there, it is a very hopeful thing. So the very idea that creation, uh, God created a good world in which something seriously has gone wrong, and that is human sin and rebellion. It gives us hope. There is, you know, if we are the way we are because we were created this way, or it's the way it's always been, which would be, the Buddhist understanding or the Darwinian understanding. You'll find in, in, all, in these various worldviews, there is no real hope for a better tomorrow. Uh, in fact, the best one can hope uh, in, a, in a Buddhist system is to cease to be. Uh, and in the Darwinian understanding, um, there's no inevitable progress going on here. It's going to be dog eat dog from now on. There is no victory over evil possible. Well, in a biblical storyline, it's not just a vicious cycle. There's an arrow to the biblical story. It's moving forward. We're moving from creation, in which something tragically wrong has happened, to where our Savior, our Redeemer has arrived, and now we have hope of a new heavens and a new earth. Uh, and it, it also lets us know how we should see creation. You know. What is salvation? Is salvation um, us being saved out of the world? Uh, no, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that the world is actually being saved by Christ. I, me, as an individual, I am experiencing Christ's redemption, so are you. But that's not all God is doing. God is not just loading up people in a cosmic spaceship to take us to heaven. No, the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ is the creator of heaven's earth and the earth. He is the sustainer of the heavens and the earth. He is the one who come and defeated the cosmic adversaries 
and has accomplished a cosmic redemption that will result in the redemption of all the heavens and the earth. Now that brings up the next question eschatologically, what is the relationship of this world to the next one? But what it lets us know is that there is a story and it's, and it's got a happy ending to it instead of a bitter, vicious cycle that never ends.